we've got a question here. What do you do if you've had a crash and you're going to inspect your carbon fiber fork? Let's, let's find an example here. Let's have a look at something. Let's get some high end carbon and uh, let's go to this lap here. All right, so this is a fork that's made by Eastern. This is an Eastern fork carbon dropout. All right. Now, Eastern makes some good product. This fork might even cost you a thousand dollars, eight five hundred dollars US. Depends, you know, depends on the situation. If you're, uh, you're obviously it's second hand, it's worth nothing. But this fork's fork's worth five bucks, really, um, or maybe more. But it has a defect in it. Not a defect, sorry, but a uh, a wear mark in there. So this fork, if we can zoom in on here, all right, here we go. And you can sort of see here, see this line here, all right. So that is from. I assume being ridden with a loose headset, all right, and that caused that little ring. It's got a ring, ring in it. This, this is very, very light. That's still safe to ride. We'll spin it around, see if we can get any more depth in there. So yeah, it's just loose headset. It's generally, so you can see, it's it's creating a little lip, all right. The thing with these Eastern forks, though, is they're very, very thick. All right, so they're very thick, thick. So it's not so much of an issue. All right, now. That can happen on any fork, though. It's not a quality issue, but someone's there. It's, it's a bit. People aren't really. There's not something to be a, a, a common assumption of what's causing these ring barks in forks. Let's go for another Eastern, for, uh, Eastern fork here. This is the EC90 SL. Again, Lapierre painted. Same fork, and we see it's on the same thing. You know what I mean? So. Is this coming out of the factory, the, the Lapierre factory in China, the Fujita factory, who make the frames for Cannondale, Cervelo, etc. Is that Colnago Pinarello? Is this from the headset bearings being loose? Or is this just from the headset not being faced properly? Right? What is the cause of this? I don't know. I'm assuming it's loose headset. I've seen it in Specialized. I've seen it in... You know, boom, boom, every brand, Pinarello, Colnago. I've seen it in Envy Forks, all right? What's causing this? Is it the headset not face properly? Is it because the person rode with a loose headset? I would say that's probably the one, loose headset, I'm saying. Because you only see it on carbon fiber, you don't see it in alloy. I'm going to go, my assumption is it goes with a loose headset, all right? That's my assumption. Loose headset causes this ring barking. And as you can see, this is, this is safe to ride because it's just a millimeter. But you can see over time that's going to etch in, etch in. And if you're a heavy guy, you know, if this is on your mountain bike doing that and you're hitting drop offs and stuff, it's going to snap, isn't it? It's going to cause a failure. But we can see we've got a lot of material on these Eastern This is the end. Eastern is probably the strongest fork out there in terms of thickness. Thick. All right, so that's on the Eastern fork. Let's go with something like a. Let's go a Trek. All right, let's go a Trek branded fork here. Nicely finished, there's no ring barking. Yeah, so if you've, you've hit, a, hit a big bump on your bike, what are you looking for? You're basically going to just be looking for any sort of cracks, you know, <clears throat> any sort of ab abnormalities. Now, you'll see here, there's like this, this sort of like, oh, what's that, is that abnormality? What's this here? This, is, is this a crack? Is that a big long crack in there? No, that's just a layup, all right? That's just, so you might think, oh, my God, I've got a big, you know, big uh, vertical crack there all the way through, you know? That's, no, that's just a layup. You know? That's just a layup. And you sort of see, you see here, it's all... Yeah, you know, all checkered, all weird looking. You're like, oh my god, it's, all, it's warping. It's warping, bruh. It's warping. It's warping, bruh. <laughs> it's, not, it's just the layout, yeah? Because basically, carbon fiber is just sheets stuck together, laid it up, alright? So that's just the deal there. And uh, you could probably look inside as well and see if there's any, what were they called, dry fiber. You know, there's no dry fiber in here. That looks pretty good to me. Alright, down there you can sort of see the bag, etc. But that looks pretty good. So I'll be looking inside, and if you can't see any, if it's flaking off, then that's a good sign. If you don't see any ring barking, that's a good sign. If you don't see any cracks around the stem, that's a good sign. You should always drop your fork out every, every you know, few months anyway, of, of riding, if you're riding a lot. I say probably every 5,000 K, drop your fork out. We've got another fork here. We'll, we'll, uh, we won't mention the brand, but let's have a look inside it. Look at that, you know. That doesn't, that doesn't look good at all, all right? I'm not gonna mention the brand because this could just be a one-off. But this is fork, in my opinion, doesn't deserve to be on a bike. I could be wrong, but that dry fibre in there, it doesn't, it just doesn't look like it's really that strong, you know? It looks like it's ready for failure. So this, this fork will not go on a bike. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a few people who could ride this fork, but I wouldn't put it on anyone's bike, personally. 
So you had that stuff like that. So if you had a crash or and you, you saw that inside, all those fibers flaking off, then that's not good. All right. Then let's have a look at another. Um, it wouldn't be fair for me to name that fork because that could have been one off. You know, let's go specialized fork. Now this fork had the ring of death, and so what I did, it would be a shame just to chuck it in the bin. So what we've done is I've cut it at where the ring of death was, that, that bearing line. I've cut it, and so this fork can be used again. I have a look inside. See some little dead long legs carcass, wet skin. So that looks okay, doesn't it? There's no flaking off. There's that, you can sort of see there's, oh, it's a, it's a crack, man, it's a crack, bro. Oh, it's a crack. Now that's just like thickness to skinness, you know, that's fine. I think. Yeah, but that's the thing with carbon fiber. It is, you know, it is a little bit precarious, but that's, you know, looking pretty good in there. So that's just where the, the joint is on the inside. So this is an old 2008 fork. It's a, the old inch and eighth. Inch and eighth, and they went to oversize. <clears throat> they went to oversize. So you can see there, this one's oversized just to make it more stiff on the front end because these are quite flexy. If you're a you know a, a, a sort of a beast rider or whatever, or just any rider, if you're really wrenching the bars at 2000 watts, they're a bit flexy. It doesn't matter, it just feels a bit less less secure. Um, so, there you go, that's how you know carbon forks can break mostly is people don't have a long enough plug and they have their stem down here. And so then the stem gets crushed. The stem bolts crush the steerer because the plug doesn't go deep enough. Another one is the, the ring of death, the marking. The marking of the uh, the loose headset, or maybe it's not face properly. I'm, I'm saying it's loose headset. And then the other one is just the uh, the fork tips as well. Fork tips are a crash, can uh, have some cracks in there. So it's just good to have a look around. And people go, oh my God. People, <laughs> people don't check their stuff. You know, and, and crashes do happen from failed parts. I've seen it a lot. So I was, ah, Corona, ah, Corona, and uh, I always check my stuff. I had a Trek fork around here, it had, it had a, a crack in the bottom of it. Again, I, I suspect from a, a crash. Um, if I can find that, I'm not sure where it is exactly. So that's just the deal there. Oh, we've got a Trek frame behind me here. All right, so let's have a look at Dream Riders Aladdin. This is a TCT, this one isn't cracked. Um, Someone isn't cracked. We'll find out it's cracked. But yeah, that's the deal. Just check your stuff. And that, let's okay. What would you check on your frame? All right. So you hit a big, big, big bump. And what will happen is if you if you hit a big enough bump, the frame cracks through here. You always get this big paint crack straight through there. All right. And often through here as well. Even sometimes straight down the middle of the head tube. You know. But that's you know I've never actually seen that happen. I've seen people hit gutters. You hit, hit a gutter hard enough, and then bang, shears here, shears there for sure. Uh, if you hit a gun with the back wheel, sometimes it can shear through here, a big crack and just whoosh, form through that. So again, you just check your bike after a crash, just, you know, make sure it's safe uh, to ride. And uh, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comment section below and just look for stuff. You know, things do, you, you do get paint cracks, um, but paint cracker in the head tube in that sort of line, like that, that doesn't look good. If it's like that, that can be okay. You know, it might just be a little bit of flex, but if the paint crack's going you know, north-south, that doesn't look good. If the paint crack is down here, north-south, we know there's a join here, so that can just be a paint crack, all right? It doesn't really mean it's bad. But if you see, like, this big, jagged, eh, on that way, you know, okay, something's going wrong. So paint cracks often happen around the bottom bracket. Some companies warranty it, but for me, it's a bit of a waste because it's just going to get crushed and sent to landfill. Paint cracks around the bottom bracket are fine. Yeah, that this is paint crack. Um, you know, a... Uh, a, a, a crack around your seat post is not good you know that's not good a crack down here wouldn't be good because the seat post we know is a high stress area all right at the back of the seat clamp a little crack there with the clamp no that's okay that's okay oh, so you think some cracks are, are bad some cracks are just paint cracks so it's i've never actually seen a carbon fiber bike fail ever from uh, just riding along there's always been a, a crash involved prior carbon fiber bikes don't just snap you know they just Unless you hit something, or you step on them. So yeah, there you go. That's uh, hopefully it's helpful. If it's helpful, give it a thumbs up. If it's not helpful, give it a thumbs down. Check for that bearing wear, the ring of death. Let's see if we can zoom in on where it is. Can we find the ring of death? Yeah, always check for that. That's probably the, one of the, the ones that just doesn't get talked about. Yeah. Oh, my bike's quality. My bike's quality, mate. It's not made in China. Yes, it is. Doesn't matter if it's made in China. Carbon is very fragile. All right. So look at that. See that that line there? That's just the start of it. This fork would be okay to ride, 
but on a lightweight rider, but you want to keep an eye on it. You want to keep an eye on it. Ideally, you'd probably want to cut it there, so then nobody, no noob could go, oh, yeah, she's all right, mate, I'm 120 kilos, it'll be good. Yeah, you probably cut it there and then put it in a 50 centimeter frame. Then you'd be good to go. If that's helpful, let us know.